catch all the repeats and record your favourite show even when you have to go out because with Sky TV the future of digital entertainment is already here Sky believe in better Bim de fiechen der winter zanskar noch der down on doldra fechon la hora chleig a tokoni or hot grill or na himalaya tree villa mater os kun leve in the farga a her dus corsi coil er shame alech from the time I was about five years old. There was always Irish music in the house, either from a, a record player or radio, something. And uh, every Sunday there was a live radio program out of Boston. And on that program, or regular on that program, was this Jerry O'Brien, Melodian player. And he came from Kinsale in Cork. And Jerry played live almost every Sunday on this program. And from what my parents told me, no matter where I was in the house or whatever I was up to, as soon as the accordion would start playing, I'd just come running and jump up and down in front of the radio as long as the accordion was playing, and as soon as he stopped, that was it. But uh, it seems to me that the accordion was like a magnet for me. Couldn't quite get enough of it. Rugg, Joe Duran, Gahar Valston, Nijag, Trucka, the Vona Aaronok, but on O Inish War Aaron Ahar, August O Kondiruska Kamoin, Avoher, August Kultor Ban on Vert, Hien on Tahar, Er on Melogen, August August Hien on Voher, Er on Vigil, so Vion Kuvalega on Gleawan. I drove my parents crazy. And at one point, I guess, they finally conceded that they have to do something, or uh, God knows. Uh, what they did was they called the radio station and they contacted this Jerry O'Brien. And uh, they got a little 10 row melodion for me. And Jerry agreed to come to the house and give me lessons. This would be just about Say I was about age ten. That would uh, put it at about 1940. August far on similar fad about Jerry O'Brien. a and in the fifty. Rather in the milch and the milch. August uh, in a masker noig. August has she seen him the banakol the rabanim O'Leary's Irish minstrels got her Boston. <laughs> When Joe was playing his music, you basically had the option of playing in either pubs or rough dance halls, where at the very best, you were considered a good rhythmic player uh, for the purpose of accompanying dancing, or uh, a good lively player that would be appreciated in the noise of a bar. So Joe uh, grew up and learned his music at, at, in one of the worst eras for Irish music in, in the history of Irish music in America. Dudley Street was the place. Uh, it's been called the crossroads of Celtic culture in Boston. Um, Joe was part of that. Um, that dance scene was something that we can only imagine. 
seven, eight, nine hundred people in a hall, five or six halls between Dudley Station and up to O'Connell Hall up on up past Dudley Street and Washington Street. Um, amazing. And you'd walk down the street and you'd hear strains of Irish music, you know, from from the north, from the south. You'd hear Cape Breton music, you'd hear the French Canadian music. Um, that whole scene was just that was that was popular culture. That's where people went to feel a sense of home. That's where they went to uh, to hear familiar sounds. involved in music from the very first time I met him. But he also uh, had a day job. He was a manager of the MBTA in Boston, but he worked three or four nights a week. And on the weekends, he was very rarely at home. He would do two or three weddings on a Saturday and again on Sunday. And so it was music all the time. In this building here, and it's still here, my God, but I don't know if they use it. This was the old Rolls Croy, where all the Canadians used to go and the Cape Breton people. And over there with that bluish and white thing, that would have been Winslow Hall. And 50 yards down from that, they would have had the Dudley Street Opera House. And somewhere in between here would have been Hibernian. My God, and Warren Street is where O'Byrne DeWitt had his store. Right, right down the street there on the left. Actuation on Hogig, Timpeler, Dadashe, Dadashakt, Hosig on on Chunskel, Kernini, a Gart, a Richt. Agus, we differed more more on on Tamsha. Shakas na Kernini more or na na Kolakti more, but Victor Agus Columbia Agus Deck Decke via Rams na Fihdi is na Trukadi. Hanig Kolakti Bjuga Chantasig Agus vi Kolakt a wine a Boston. The Auburn Dewitt Record Company took a gear of those Copley in the Egyptian. Agus vi Jerry O'Brien a farsha a Uber don Kolakt shin Agus the Vyakshe a Moina. And Cardin Ganam Gana. So um Hula and Faravi Aganis er Holoch Copley, Shin Justice O'Burn to it, Hula Shay Joe Agus uh Jerry Shenam Likela Eron Radio, Agus uh Harig Shay uh Conra uh uh Dun Vert. So Hosi Jerry O'Brien or Dus Rin Shay Nikar Nikid uh Kernini a her copley mock agus uh Via Galta on on Railt the Galta via uh, Joe Duran how did she shoot in in a yig? Up gramophone at the time, you know, and uh, I was trying to find out what Joe was was doing. So I used to turn down the the, the, the speeds, yeah, and I could I could see his name, Joe Duran, on, on the record, but I had no idea, particularly those roles. I couldn't just figure out. I couldn't figure that out on, on the fiddle at all. You know, I was only learning myself, but I would just. Just totally amazed at what, what was coming out of that accordion, because I had never heard accordion playing like that before in my life. I was in Chicago, 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 I was in 
Buske dår det ved meg hen, ikke? Vi dår det om buske dår det hele. Jeg skal plukke George og Ram. Og det skjønnes. Det er skjønnes. Det er kjappes å kunne stil på fra henne. Jeg holder henne igjen. Det er noe som ikke er strålen skjer her om å komme. Men det er en stil i hvit sånn år siden i neden. Når en stil i buske ved kjenner vi lov. Nå pusher en på deg. Det er skjønnes. 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 Vi ser en ish hockeyag, vi ser folks er manskol, high school, når er inne i nåket kernin har sig mag, du vil se anlogger fad, inne i temple er se hev dag blæshen, inne i temple je hev alle er sjenem le le Jerry O'Brien, vi en vertiko partjok er gæhr togokon Irish All Stars or har vi vi George Duran Trehar Joe Farah Henock Aaron Mancho Lo August Farah Aaron Biano John Connors August the Joe Duran part of the trio the Joe Duran trio Ahmed Cole Lesson Arani Tluchuk Connie Foley Kiriak the Ram Rich Sna Sna Kaygati Sna Sna Shaskati Joe's music in our house that was when my mother would be cleaning the house. It wasn't like guest music, you know. It wasn't company music. It was every day, if you were washing the dishes, if you were cleaning, cleaning the house, if you were doing anything. It was Joe Duran's records that were on. So I was pretty small. It was probably before I actually started playing. I might have started playing, say, uh, maybe seven or eight years old. So it was kind of even, it was before that I was listening to Joe. Joe was it. to show you how strong the Irish community was here in the United States. But the fact that it was Irish traditional music that was being recorded at that time, I guess that's a testament to the strength of Joe's music. But uh, Joe, Joe, Joe recorded 78s from what, what, I, what, I, uh, what he was telling me there. And it was right then that the 45s and the 33s were starting to, to come in. You know, so I guess that might have been, what, 50, 1957, 1958, through about the 60s, and all of a sudden, gone. Wouldn't it be reassuring if you always had access to your dental records wherever you traveled? Well, at Smiles Dental, we now use the latest cloud technology to store your records in your own secure virtual file, which you can access from anywhere in the world should you need to. It's just another way that Smiles Dental is changing the face of Irish dentistry at our growing network of clinics across the country. Smiles Dental, for healthy confidence. This ad for Smiles Dental was made with the support of AIB. I will always be too young to be grey. Excellence creme from L'Oreal. Sensational colour that helps to triple protect before, during and after. No greys. Rich, natural looking colour. Excellence by L'Oreal Paris. And now try our natural blonde collection. With up to €100,000 to be won instantly and the chance to win half a million euro on the TV game show Surprise yourself with a winning streak scratch card from the National Lottery. HMS Sovereign of the Seas. Build this stunning quality replica model. SU1 is at newsagents now with your first magazine and parts, all for just two fifty. The Kosk Achor er Imrikig O'Aaron. So the the Nehimrikig Dull Elide, the Na hernig fein a vi a un hana fein a dolla maca dina broch balta agus chuig na na hali dausa agus an sail 
cold for a vian chin and lar vast and Hanishay con der no Hushay Lake of his Fuyera, Hanishay con Derig. Now, all during this time, I was playing the ballroom scene regularly. And of course, this was a big part of my income. And then ultimately, it seems like the very late 50s, or probably the early 60s, might be a little more accurate. Seems like overnight, the whole scene just just changed. Out of all those ballroom things that we played and the thousands of people that went through those doors all over Dudley Street, the, the whole ballroom scene kind of uh, fell in upon itself. So I, I think Joe was eventually faced with a decision, you know, especially when the dance hall scene started to, to die out in America, and it died out in, in, in New York in the 30s. It died out in other cities at different times, but eventually it died out completely in all the cities, Philadelphia, Boston, Chicago. Uh, and and uh, he, he would have had to make a very practical decision. What am I going to do with my music now? And it, in, in retrospect, looking at it, it was a very ethical decision. Uh, for him uh, to 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 give up this music because there was nowhere for to, there was nowhere to play. whole hog then into piano accordion and to get myself a decent instrument that I could go out and work with. I sold my button box and I wound up doing a lot of Latins, a lot of jazz, uh, swing, show tunes, a little bit of um, Italian work and a little bit of Polish work. Somewhere in there, 1980, 83, uh, piano accordion lost its appeal, its commercial appeal. Nobody wanted it. And even when I tried to play a few Irish tunes on piano accordion, people didn't want to buy it. They said, well, why are you playing the piano accordion? Where's your button box? And uh, eventually I had to give up the piano accordion because I, I, I wasn't working. Nobody wanted the piano accordion. So I had to make the, uh, yet another transition, and I went to uh, electronic keyboards, synthesizers. And I stayed doing that until around 1990, 1989. And uh, my son and I formed a band, my son Joe, a great musician. We called the group Nightlife. But then uh, we wound up doing, you know, from just weddings and parties and dances, we wound up in a very, very smart supper club down here in the South Shore. And this was great for about two years. And then all of a sudden, they sold the place. There we were. <laughs> And I said, oh, God, I can't go through this again. I, I, just, I just can't face this again. People hear those recordings. Uh, I assumed when I heard his recordings that he was a much older man and that he was long gone and that we, you know, wouldn't it have been great to be able to sit in a room with him and play a tune. And it's like a dream come true getting to know him and being able to sit in a room and play with him. Hanshe Rash, Dash Arikh Shay, a Ray Nua Ella, Nurata Dram Nua. Talk of Gontosig, Dramatoi, Coma Kyol, it was Shop Queen to Ella the Tal Talk Duck, Com Shahin Kyol, Peter Feeney's Dream, Marhampla, August Eganurshin, Insna Nakaraka, Society Anta, the Galore Kyol Gaelok, Agoma, Er Mu Er Vunda, Tradishunta, so vi Edri via Philadelphia, August Galore Lor Ella, a Coma Kyol, August Ranchua, a Shinandina, Nelehan de Shaw. Is o verica honishe, is o haraka verica honishe, agus is asna nadahadi, isna nakayagadi honishe. Of 
course, they sent me some courtesy copies of that CD, you know, that Rigo did, and I used to listen to those, and I said, my God, I could never play like that again. I wasn't even going to try. And besides that, I didn't have a button box. Uh, Joe Duran was contacted by the people who were running the uh, big Irish festival uh, in Wolf Trap, and Mike Denny was one of the, the main organizers, and uh, Mike Denny and myself talked, and, and uh, and, and Mike told me that, that he was going to invite Joe Duran, and uh, he did, I think he contacted Errol Hitchner, uh, who was, uh, is a music critic for, for the Irish Echo. I think Errol contacted uh, Joe. And I saw this as a fitting way, the, the best way for me to really put the cap on my career. You know, one last time, just for old time's sake, or the last glide across the dance floor, whatever way you want to say it. came back to the music um, the first time being at the Wolf Trap Festival. Our children were there and they were amazed to hear what he could do on this little box. They had never heard him before. Now, I always heard growing up that my dad made all these records and everything and it was that was a great thing to know. I love you. But to actually like physically see it, it was it was like, you know, meeting a part of my father for the first time that I never even knew. There were about twelve hundred people in that tent, and I would say at least a thousand of them were crying, including me, my wife, and my daughter, and all kinds of people. It was the, one of the most emotionally intense things that I've ever experienced. <laughs> When he appeared in Wolf Trap, he was the sensation of the festival. And, and uh, you know, it, it's almost an, an index of that. To this day, I can't remember who else was at that festival. I can't remember who I played with myself at that festival. All I remember is Joe Duran. And there was no way that Irish musicians were going to allow Joe Duran to go back home again and spend another X number of years, you know, playing at home or not playing at all. No, uh, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't going to be allowed to happen. It has changed his life and mine. He has done so much traveling. He's enjoying it so much. We both are. And uh, the children are just so proud of him. And so am I. He's a fantastic husband and father and friend. And um, I think he'll play for as long as he possibly can. <laughs> I suppose the easiest way for me to say it is when I do get the chance to go to Ireland, it's not so much like I'm visiting Ireland, it's almost like I'm going home. Now, that's a strange thing because, you know, this is my home, and uh, I don't get that feeling, of course, anywhere else. So, uh, I don't know, but uh, maybe that stems from my childhood dreams of Ireland or what I, I really don't know. I don't examine it, I just accept it and go with it. And this really was driven home because uh, when I did the Galway Arts Festival in 95, they set up a special concert for me out on in, uh, Inishmoor in Holleronan. And uh, this is where I met some people who remembered, you know, my father's family, and God, it was gorgeous. Joe. Joe. Yeah, this I... Joe was my father. <laughs> okay. I didn't know your father, but I knew your uncles. Which one? Um, Cole? Uh, jo Cole and uh, George. Cole and George, huh? Yeah. That was lovely. Welcome home. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I don't knock my head off. Mm -hmm. So, when I play with Joe, uh, and rather than competing with Joe, I like Joe to be out front, and I just play 
the basic tune, but sometimes he's, he's, he's so intuitive, he, he sort of brings you into the music and you feel like you want to do the things that he's doing, at least try to do the things that he's doing. When, when you're just playing and trying to lay back, because he's so creative, all of a sudden you find yourself trying to do the things that, that Joe is doing as well. a kind of a mode that I, I try to get into uh, and I don't get there all as often as I would like but every so often uh, everything is just working it's just it's effortless it's just it's just there and I and I tend to shut my eyes especially when that happens and there may be 800 or a thousand people there but when I get if I'm successful in getting into that mode it's like getting inside the music, becoming, it's, it's, it's a strange thing, I, I suppose, it, it may sound a little strange, and some people might say, my God, is he weird, but no, uh, the musicians especially, I think, will understand. Uh, you kind of become one with the music, at least I do, and I don't, it just doesn't happen all that often. When it does, it's wonderful. Uh, there's nothing but me, and the box, and the music. cautious about going back to play since he had been away from it for so long but I remember that day so well at the Wolf Trap Festival he got on stage and after he played the first tune he was there and he's been there ever since Degree Lorna Himalaya, Ertaun and Dulra, Fekian Kupla Nomad.